Hello, everybody. My name is Danny Ramon, Intelligence and Response Manager at Overhaul. Thank you very much for joining me for this, uh, this episode of The Intelligence Perspective. Uh, I'd like you all to let us know where you guys are joining us from in the comment section. Uh, that way we know you know where the comment section is. And if you have any questions during this presentation, you can type them into that comment section. And if we're able to get to them live, we absolutely will. And if for any reason we're not able to get to them during the live broadcast, we will come back after the, the broadcast has ended uh, and answer any questions that may be there as well. Uh, today, um, if we can go ahead and bring up the slideshow, we're going to be talking about uh, how to partner with law enforcement to protect your cargo. This is going to be both or all before, during, and after uh, a theft event for recoveries and investigations. Uh, if we can please bring up the next slide. My guest today is going to be John Cannon. He's one of our law enforcement liaisons at Overhaul. He's got a total of 43 years of law enforcement experience, and he retired from the Georgia Bureau of Investigations Major Theft Unit as an SAC after 36 years. Uh, thanks for joining me, John. Thank you for having me, Danny. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So uh, let's get into the recovery case study. Uh, in the last episode, we focused a little bit on strategic and fraudulent thefts. Uh, so this time we're going to be looking at straight theft. Uh, and straight theft is far more common in the U.S. Uh, straight thefts are where the entire tractor and trailer is stolen from the legitimate driver, and that's usually when it's left unattended. Uh, if we can go ahead and go to the next, the next screen, we're going to show the timeline of a typical straight theft. Now, when these types of thefts happen, there's usually a short time window to report the theft to make a recovery much more likely. Uh, and that's commonly considered to be about two hours from when the cargo is stolen. Now, in this case we're looking at today, uh, we have a load of gaming consoles that was stolen from a truck stop in Indiana in August of last year. Uh, John, if you could walk us through what happened in that one, and we'll go yeah, ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And... Yeah, absolutely, Danny. Uh, normally, mm -hmm. when... Uh, organized cargo thieves are targeting a particular product. They do their homework, they do their surveillance, and then they go to the distribution center where that particular product is being shipped. And from there, they do surveillance on the trailer, tractor trailers that leaves the uh, the origin. And they follow it until they get the opportunity to steal it. And in this particular case, they actually followed the driver from origin. And when he made stop for his uh, break at a Love's truck stop, went inside for the break, and the tractor trailer was actually stolen while he was inside for his break. Um, he returned, he was not inside as long as they normally take. So he came back out and uh, discovered that his tractor trailer was missing. And per protocol for him, he contacted Overhaul uh, and advised us that uh, his tractor trailer had been stolen from the truck stop, the Love's truck stop. Uh, after um, Overhaul was notified of this theft, uh, we were engaged. The LA Connect team was engaged and contacted our law enforcement contacts in the area, which happened to be the Indiana State Police and the Jasper County Sheriff's Office. We informed them of what's going on, provided them with the information uh, regarding the tractor trailer and, uh, and advised them that it was actively being tracked by us. We continued to provide this tracking information to law enforcement while the tractor trailer was actually rolling down the road. Uh, we noticed that it made a quick stop, two exits south of the theft. And based on uh, our experience, we communicated to law enforcement that probably what was going on was the cargo thieves were actually switching the tractor okay. from the original tractor. Uh, and John, I want to bring up one point here. Uh, yeah. This is one of those areas where we weren't working with law enforcement, or I'm sorry, we weren't working with cargo theft task forces within law enforcement. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. In this particular area, there, there's not a cargo theft task force. Okay. So, you know. Yeah. So um, in the, take a look at the next slide. It's going to be, uh, I think, pertinent to, to the next part that we're going to be talking about. You said that the tractor had been abandoned about two exits south of where it was stolen. Yeah, exactly. And and we we communicated that information to law enforcement. And at this particular time, we recognized the type cargo thieves that we were dealing with. And we and we're very familiar with how they conduct cargo theft. So we provided uh, that information to law enforcement. We let them know that it was probably being towed by a different tractor, probably of a different color from the tractor tr that was stolen at the theft. 
Also, and we, we were able to confirm that, by the way, audience, uh, the two pictures that we're looking at on screen right now, uh, the red tractor is the original tractor that picked up the uh, the shipment at origin, and the blue tractor uh, is the tractor that the load was recovered with. I'm sorry, go ahead, John. Right. Yeah, that's the bad guy's tractor. And we informed law enforcement of this and the possibility that they had also camouflaged or changed the appearance of the trailer. Yeah. Normally Let's go what ahead and slide is, five for that one, please. Yeah. Normally what they do is they either they use, we advise law enforcement that there could be fresh paint on the trailer. There could be uh, mailbox numbers. Uh, we informed them that they probably had switched the tags on it. Um, they had tried to camouflage the trailer. So we informed law enforcement who in, was actively looking for the trailer, tractor the trailer along the interstate of the possibility that this had been taken, had already taken place when they had stopped. So that about an hour or so after the theft is they were still rolling south down the highway. The, uh, the law enforcement agencies that we had engaged located a trailer that was very similar to it. It had the fresh paint on it, had the new mailbox numbers on the side, and we informed them that it was a Great Dane trailer and had some, you know, look for that particular emblem on the back and look for those other things like the paint, like the uh, mailbox numbers. And they actually located the trailer. And uh, as you can see, everything had been changed on it. The, uh, the original numbers on the top right had been painted over and they had added mailbox numbers onto the left hand bottom of the side. Uh, after they located this, in fact, we actually saw the Wi-Fi pop up on our, our devices from the patrol car. So we knew that they were close and they had the, uh, the right tractor trailer. So they pulled it, they pulled it over, took the driver in, into custody and, and the load was actually recovered intact, uh, during this theft. Yep. Let's take a look at the next slide. I believe that'll show some of the, uh, recovery portion. You can actually see the, uh, the mailbox. Uh, sticker numbers that are there under the Great Dane logo as well in the uh, in the middle picture right there. Right, those were the exact things we told them to look for prior to them locating the trailers. This is the this is normal for these this particular cargo theft crew to actually paint over the numbers and and we informed them look for fresh paint. That's one thing that should stick out, and it does as you can see from the picture. And also that they normally use mailbox numbers. And you can see there on the left, on one of the pictures with the mailbox numbers. You can also see that the trailer was kind of dirty, and you can see where they were actually uh, when they were applying the mailbox numbers. They, they they wiped off some of the dirt and everything, and that kind of stuck out too to them. So you know, those were the things that we actually told them to look for, and and it actually happened. Yeah. So it was highly impressive. I remember that recovery uh, when that Indiana State Trooper spotted that while it was rolling down the highway at 70 miles an hour. That was, right. that was pretty yeah. impressive. Uh, and yeah, as you mentioned, you know, this is a, this is a crew that we're pretty familiar with. As a matter of fact, uh, Bobby Motley, one of our other law enforcement liaisons, uh, was pretty familiar with this crew uh, when he was working at the Kentucky state police. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, this started happening after one of those, one of the members of that crew had just been released from prison uh, several months back at this point. That's correct. That's correct. They had, um, and Bobby had actually arrested them several years prior to that. And they, uh, had just been released from prison and, and they're, I guess they didn't learn their lesson. They're back stealing cargo again. It must not have, right? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next screen. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, there, there wasn't a local cargo theft task force for us to contact in this area. Usually uh, a lot of the cargo thefts happen where there are cargo theft task forces, Southern California, Memphis, Atlanta, et cetera. Um, but when that's the case, when you're not dealing with, uh, with a cargo theft task force, what are some of the things you need to keep in mind when communicating with law enforcement in order to enable them uh, to be able to do their job? Yeah, yeah, Dan, that's a great question. And 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 you you see the you see the keys to successful recovery up there. And these are the things that that law enforcement needs to to effect a, a recovery. Is is first thing is timely notification. In this case, we actually got that because the driver did not stay inside the truck stop as long as he normally does. And when he came back out, he he, he notified us very timely that his tractor trailer had been been stolen. Of course, we had accurate information. Um, regarding the tractor trailer. We had that uh, because of the process we go through of taking pictures of everything at origin. So we had the original pictures and everything of uh, what the tractor trailer looked like, the tag numbers, the trailer numbers, the uh, truck numbers and everything else. So we already had that to provide to law enforcement. And uh, 
And in this particular case, we got a rapid response, both from the Indiana State Police and the Jasper County Sheriff's Office. What we had uh, actually, I think one of us was talking to the Indiana State Police and one of us was talking to the Jasper County Sheriff's Office. And we were actually setting up roadblocks down the road on the interstate from where the actual recovery took place. Um, and this, was, this, I think, was critical, was to identify the type of theft and knowledge of the cargo thieves, trends and tactics. We basically knew pretty much who had actually stolen the tractor trailer. And based on our knowledge of their tactics and trends, we were able to communicate that to the uh, law enforcement agencies responding as far as the camouflaging the trailer, switching out the tractor, using the tractor of a different color. Those were the things that are actually very key that, you know, law enforcement needs these things to actually recover this in a timely manner. And, and everything in this particular case lined up and, you know, it happened just like we told them it was going to happen. So we were, we were successful in recovering it. Absolutely. Uh, let's take a look at the next slide. So when we look at, you know, what information we need to have ready for law enforcement, what specific information is that? Yeah, one of the first things is a detailed description of the stolen property. And that includes not only tractor trailer, but the cargo. Uh, you need to have all that information readily available so you can provide that to law enforcement when you actually report the theft. Um, driver contact info, that's, that's critical too, because that way law enforcement can get in touch with the driver. And, and speak directly with him without having to go through someone from the company. It's important and imperative that law enforcement actually communicate with the driver at, at the time of the theft so we can uh, see exactly what's going on, what he can tell us, any information he can provide us. And in this particular case here, the driver was 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 very good in communicating. He not only called us, but he called law enforcement. So we were all talking. We were all on basically on the same sheet of music. Um, need a 24 hour contact number for the victim. Uh, that way, if, uh, if law enforcement needs anything from, from, from the victim, they were able to reach out and talk with someone and get it because it depends on when the law enforcement need that information. They may be fixing, they may be, uh, putting together a, a warrant search warrant. They may need some additional information regarding the property that was stolen or, or, you know, some particular information that might help them get that warrant. So it's important that you have a 24 hour contact number for that victim and that he answered the phone when you actually reach out to him and, and try to get that information. And also we, we like to make sure they check for a manufacturer installed GPS on the tractor trailer. If there's anything like that on there, you know, that's something that law enforcement needs to know sooner than later. I've, I've been involved in cases in the past when three days later, I get a call when I was actually still working three days later. Oh yeah, there was a GPS on that. Well, nobody didn't tell us that at the time of the theft. And it's not going to help us out very much now. So, so it's important right. that all that information be provided up front to law enforcement when it, when the act, when the theft actually happens. So those are some of the important things that you need to have ready when, when you report it and you're communicating with law enforcement. Right. Let's take a look at the next slide, please. So uh, communication and, and cooperation with law enforcement doesn't stop at when the recovery happens. Uh, why is it important that that uh, the, the private sector maintain communication with law enforcement after the recovery? Well, it's important that, that they maintain that relationship and, and keep those lines of communication open because law enforcement normally doesn't have the equipment or the uh, resources to store or impound cargo. It, it's, uh, you need to, uh, you need to stay involved with them and help them, help them with the recovery. If they need a tractor trailer to move it, if they need a place to store it, you know, you need to help them provide, that location where they can do this. Consumable goods, they need an immediate plan. Uh, if you recover something, uh, frozen chicken or something like that, you need to have an immediate plan to be able to deal with those particular items because law enforcement does not have those uh, capabilities to deal with consumable goods. Um, have the, uh, the product info available for law enforcement, including serial numbers. That, that's gonna help them, assist them in a recovery. That's some information that they're going to need pretty quick. And, and a lot of times, once the recovery is made, that kind of slows down the process. And, 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 and victims need to understand that when, when the recovery is made, you need, to, you need to stay involved with them. And they need these serial numbers and they need all this information. The, the case did not end with the recovery of the product because, as I've always said, these guys are stealing from one person a day. They're going to be stealing from another person tomorrow. So it's important that you kind of help out each other provide that information to law enforcement so they can actually to make the recovery. So they're going to need that stuff. And, and I think this is 
this is key here to stay involved with law enforcement and the prosecutors. It means a lot to the prosecutors when you show up in that courtroom and you're sitting out there when the uh, hearings are going on or whatever. So it's important that you stay involved with law enforcement, stay involved with the prosecutors and just provide them with any follow up info that they may need. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and end the slideshow. And I've got one last uh, one last question for you, John. Um, now, we all know that during a theft event, stress and emotions are running high for everyone. And that can cause tension, especially when you're trying to just cooperate. Right. Uh, how can businesses engage law enforcement and build relationships before they experience a theft event? Yeah, that's that's another key thing, Danny, I think is important is don't wait until you need law enforcement to develop those relationships at two o'clock in the morning when you get that call that you're cargo has been stolen and then you're looking for you know you're looking for someone to call at two o'clock in the morning and uh, so it's important that you that you maintain you develop and maintain those relationships and you can do that through just inviting the officers in your particular jurisdiction over for coffee or or just going down to the station introducing yourself to them meeting with them um, that's one way attend uh, law enforcement conferences uh, around the country that deal with cargo theft that's the best way to make contacts with law enforcement across the country. And I I try to attend as many as I can. And, and, and on the same, on the flip side, I try to develop all those relationships with the private sector when I was a law enforcement guy. So, you know, you, you they need law enforcement as much as law enforcement needs them sometimes. So it's important that you develop and maintain those relationships through through those conferences and, and through just inviting them over and, and, and get it, meeting them. Don't, don't try to uh, develop that relationship at two o'clock in the morning when you're you're scrambling around trying to find somebody that your cargo has been stolen. You need to have that. You need to have a plan in place and already have that thought through. And, and, and that should be something that you last thing you should be dealing with at two o'clock in the morning is developing those relationships. You should be de dealing with the theft. Absolutely. Now, if anyone has any questions about uh, some of these conferences that you can attend, uh, definitely reach out to myself or to John Cannon. Uh, there's several of them coming up in the next few months, including Southwestern Transportation Security Council, going into the wrong logo. Uh, Pharmaceutical Cargo Security Coalition is coming up as well. Uh, we also have Miami Dade is hosting a law enforcement symposium in Miami. Uh, and there's a TAPA T1 conference coming up in Dallas as well. And I believe uh, you're going to be offering a scholarship for a law enforcement officer. Is that correct, John? Right. And, and TAPA does offer scholarships for law enforcement to attend that particular conference. And it's actually the law enforcement conference. There will be cargo theft guys from all over the country at that particular conference. And if you are interested in attending that, please get in touch with me or, or, or Jennifer Bennett with TAPA. Uh, either one of us can help you with that, that information and get you, get you hooked up and signed up to come to that conference. And I think it would be beneficial to you to attend that if you're a Absolutely. law enforcement guy. Beneficial law enforcement, enforcement yeah. and, uh, and private sector as well. Right. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we look forward to the next episode that'll be happening uh, the second Tuesday of next month. Uh, and as always, if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments and we will answer them uh, as they pop up. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, John.